In this tutorial we're going to be looking at lordosis and sciatica and how the two can be linked. Um, it doesn't mean it is linked but um, I have, uh, when I've done my online uh, lower back pain consultations, um, I have had people who have had lordosis that, are, that it's influencing. I wouldn't say it's necessarily causing but it's certainly influencing, playing its part in um, in sciatica. So what we're going to look at is these th or work through these four points. So lordosis, the anatomy that's involved, the sciatic nerve, and then talk about some things uh, that you can do as well. Now we've magnified the lumbar spine. So you can see here, this is where we've magnified. So we've got, this is now a normal curve. And obviously this is the normal curve. And you can see you've got sort of space between these spinous processes here so on and so forth but the important bit you've got the spinal cord which goes down through the center of the spine and then what you have are these intervertebral foramen so these are basically the spaces where the nerve roots come out so we're specifically talking more about this one here and this one here so when we get the lordotic curve or the exaggerated curve, and we get the condition we know as lordosis, these intervertebral foramen, foramen, they close. So this gap gets smaller, and this can irritate the nerve. Now, this doesn't mean that it is happening, but what I'm saying is that it can happen. Now, if you have lordosis and you experience sciatic um, symptoms, it still may not be this. It still could be something else driving it. But what I'm doing is I'm sort of talking very specifically that it is. And this is, in some respects, um, part of the mechanism for it. So you've got these intervertebral foramen, they close. So the, this space where the nerve comes, where the sciatic nerve or, the, or a branch of the sciatic nerve comes out and feeds the, sort of the, the sciatic nerve down the back of the leg and sort of joins in like so, that becomes closed and these sort of nerve roots here, they can become irritated. So a part of the solution to this is opening out that space. So this is something that we need to um, sort of focus on when we're understanding the lower back pain, understanding the lordosis and understanding uh, the sciatica that's being experienced. So what we're now going to do is look more specifically at the sciatic nerve. So what we've done is we've gone from let's just say the whole spine to the lumbar spine to sort of these these sort of segments of the spine talking about the intervertebral forum and closing and now we're going to look at the sciatic nerve so essentially we've just been zooming in on um, uh, on the spine or sorry on the sciatic nerve what this slide is showing are the the segments of which of the spine which the sciatic nerve comes from so this is the sacrum down here but the two main ones that we were looking at, because we're talking about the lumbar spine and the exaggerated curvature of it and the closing of the intervertebral foramen where the nerve roots come out, which can get irritated, which is at the level of S1, L5 and L5, L4. Now, as you can see here, these branches come down and feed the sciatic nerve. This branch comes down and feeds the sciatic nerve. What also is happening is you've got the gluteal group are also being uh, um, irritated or influenced by those nerve roots as well. And as you can see here, a combination of five nerve roots that exit from inside the lower lumbar and upper sacral spine, L4, L5, S1, S2 and S3 forms the sciatic nerve. So what we're now starting to understand is if we're talking about the sciatic nerve, we're getting pain down the back of the leg, but we're also understanding that there's some gluteal involvement as well, which we're going to talk about next and how that becomes involved uh, when we're talking about uh, sciatica with regards to um, how we can go about then thinking about treating it and some of the options that we have when we talk about treating it. Finally, what can we do about this? So what are the, some of the things that we can start to, um, to put in place to be able to manage the sciatic problems? Number one, if you come on a, a lower back pain assessment, uh, sorry, consultation and assessment, 
One of the first things we do is look at the triggers and we try and remove them. If we can do that, we're going to go some way to, uh, in some respects, removing the pain. If we remove the trigger of the pain, we're going to remove the pain. So that's a part of it. When we talk about sort of more traditional uh, therapies for it, an option to try can be the nerve floss, which can just loosen off uh, a tensioned nerve. Now, this can be useful for some people, so it can make it better, but in other people, it can make it worse. So we have to look at it as an option, but we have to look at it as an option that potentially might not work. But we're choosing it in a calculated way because we're understanding the different triggers and then we're starting to put in place um, what can be done. So a nerve floss can be useful. And it's exactly the same here. When we talk about roll or massage, the gluteal group, because as we've mentioned, parts of the sciatic nerve are feeding glute minimus, which is here, which joins on the top of the femur onto the pelvis here. Then you've got glute medius, which basically comes over the top of it. This is just up here is just a cut off part of it and then comes down over glute minimus. So again, we need to roll through this sort of lateral part of the hip. So what we're basically doing there is we are relaxing the muscle, which can then go some way to relaxing the nerve and start to ease the tension within the nerve. And then finally, to start managing the lordosis, we would then start to go about stretching the hip flexors, so psoas, rectus femoris, um, TFL as well, and potentially as well the adductors as well. So we would stretch all of that off. So we're just trying to stretch the hip flexors to manage the lordosis and then we're trying to roll the roll and roll or massage the gluteal group to um, uh, calm down the nerve we don't want to stretch the gluteal group because that can potentially trigger um, more tension in the nerve which again then can trigger uh, the sciatic symptoms so that's a brief overview of uh, lordosis and sciatica and some things you can start doing for it um, if you do want help with that, you can come on the lower back pain uh, online consultation and assessment, which includes going through this, looking at your triggers, and then putting a plan in place to, um, uh, to overcome it with two weeks of support after the plan. So you can then um, still have access to me to, um, uh, to help treat the problem and understand any questions and queries that you may have about the plan that's been put in place. So many thanks for watching. My name is Chris from Chris Hold Training. I look forward to speaking to you in the next tutorial.